In this video, we're going to look at the difference between a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. The body has abilities to run on two prime energy sources, plus a backup energy source where it cannibalizes protein in the muscles in the case of emergencies. Now the first, sugars or carbohydrates are stored in the muscles and the liver as glycogen. And we typically have 1,700 calories stored in this manner. We don't really have an upper limit on our fat storage, and even a lean person can have 70,000 calories stored in fat. So if we look really simply at the arithmetic, it's logical that the body evolved over time to burn fat as its preferred energy source. However, in the West, we typically eat a higher proportion of our diets in the form of carbs. More importantly, we tend to eat carbs that raise the blood sugar too high, which in turn causes an insulin release to bring the blood sugar back down to more stable levels. Now, insulin does this by opening the cells and having them convert the excess energy, the excess sugar, into fat. And worse, it can also convert protein into fat if eaten with the same meal of sugar or eaten in excess on its own. You need to keep your insulin levels near zero before you can start burning any fat. Or worded differently, you need to keep your sugar intake and your carb intake near zero if you're to begin the fat burning process. And this is why most people fail in their fat burning mission and they end up losing a little bit of water in their exercise and diet but don't really burn into the fat. Now I want to stress this point, once you've stored around 1700 calories in the glycogen stores, i.e. in the liver and in the muscles, you simply convert everything else into fat. Now logically, if your glycogen stores are never empty, because say you eat three meals a day, as is typical in the West, or you snack in between those meals, there's never really a massive need for further carbs other than tasting good. Longer term, the body will dial down the sensitivity of the cells to insulin. So we have to make more and more insulin to do the same job, i.e. more and more insulin to remove the excessive blood sugar. And this is what is often termed insulin resistance and is covered by other videos on this channel. Suffice to say that you'll have a very tough time burning any fat if you are indeed insulin resistant so we'll have a link above going to a video covering that. So a ketogenic diet, a keto diet, is where you deliberately have very, very low levels of carbohydrates, healthy fats and protein as your main energy source. Once you've been in this type of diet for a week or more, the body begins to upregulate its enzymes that help you burn fat. Now, when fat is burned, it releases what are known as ketone bodies, ketones, which are the energy source which the body runs on. So the name ketogenic, or keto, is simply from the fact that you're burning fat as your preferred fuel source. Now, the benefits from such a diet, a keto diet, apart from being very efficient at burning fat and therefore very efficient in weight loss, are that it also stabilizes your blood sugar so your energy and concentration are significantly improved as well. Now, there are a number of additional health benefits claimed by medical doctors who've put a lot of patients on such a diet. And whilst it seems counterintuitive, the burning of blood fats constantly actually helps lower the blood's own blood fats, triglycerides and bad cholesterol. And so, in addition to that, blood pressure will often come down because the type of carbohydrates encouraged are the leafy green vegetables and they contain a lot of potassium. Now there are a few negatives with a keto diet and we'll go into those later on in the video, but we're going to jump into intermittent fasting now. Now 
Intermittent fasting uses the principle that if you leave a sufficient gap between meals, you force the body to cut through the glycogen stores and burn fat. For example, if your last meal in the evening was at 7 p.m. and you didn't eat again till the following day at 1 p.m., you have left an 18 hour fast. Now, it's rather counterintuitive again, but you would expect that if you ate this way, you'd feel hungry. But the reverse is actually the case because the body starts to burn its own fat as energy and your blood sugar is stable because you've not got new meals coming in and increasing the blood sugar, energy levels actually go up and you really don't feel hungry eating this way. When we eat snacks and multiple meals, our insulin levels will typically rise with every meal, or with every snack, and that turns off fat burning. That's a crucial point. If you raise your insulin, you can't burn fat. Logically, the body's raising insulin because it wants to store excessive blood sugar as fat. So as soon as you get an insulin release, your body cannot go and take the fat that's already stored and use it as an energy source. And that's why most people fail with their diets. They don't understand that one principle. Now, often a raise in blood sugar from eating too many carbs or carbs in the wrong format is part by insulin as fat. And then we feel hungry again. So the body uses stress hormones to raise the blood sugar and one of the stress hormones, cortisol, has us crave sugary foods and carbs, which it then parks around the tummy as stored fat. Now, one of the negatives with eating this way is that too many people in that eating window eat the wrong type of food. I did when I first started. I thought well, the weight was coming away very, very quickly. I could eat what I wanted in the eating window. Now, logically, if keto is a very powerful way of burning fat and intermittent fasting is a very powerful way of burning fat, if you combine the two of them, you'll get much, much faster results. And I know this because it's exactly what I did. I plateaued after a certain period of time with intermittent fasting. But the moment that I used only a keto diet during the eating window, it supercharged my fat burning and my remaining belly fat just started to melt away really super fast. Once I understood the action of insulin and combined intermittent fasting and keto, it was like I was on a supercharged way of melting my fat. Now, within a couple of weeks, I started seeing the shape of my ab muscles that I hadn't seen in 20 years. They were always there, the abs, sitting underneath all of that fat. They weren't visible, however, because they were an inch or so down. Intermittent fasting is covered elsewhere on this channel, and again, we'll give a link. But let's jump into the negatives, first of all. Now, the negatives with intermittent fasting is that a lot of our eating is actually social. We eat around certain times of the day, dinner with family or lunch with family and friends. And that can be difficult if you're restricting the window which you eat in. For example, if you have a four hour window, it's difficult also to get enough nutrients in that four hour eating window because you can only eat so much before you're full. Therefore, it's important that you think quality of nutrition rather than thinking just what tastes good. Where possible, therefore, you should be looking at free range and organic food. And yes, we know that costs more, but actually you end up eating less eating this way, so it evens out. The other negative is that tea and coffee can break the fast if you add sugar and milk to them. Now, from an early age, most of us are programmed to eat three or four times a day. We don't think about it, just it's how we eat in the West. Um, we often snack in between. So it can take quite a while to undo that programming. For example, me personally, I never feel hungry now until about one or two in the afternoon. I don't bother with breakfast. But that's very strange when you go on holiday or you know, go on business meetings for breakfast. 
and you simply don't feel hungry. And so it's easier not to go to the table than just sit and have a tea or a coffee. Now, with keto, the negatives are that the diet comprises protein, fat, and restricted carbs. And a lot of the protein sources for the non-vegetarian, non-vegan community are that meat, fish, cheese, and eggs can be very binding and, and lead to constipation. And what happens to most people who start off on a keto diet is they miss a very important point. And that's the carbs that you should be eating are the low density carbs, things like leafy green vegetables and salads. And the roughage in them corrects the, the problem of constipation. Also, they contain a lot of potassium, and potassium helps the bowel movement. Now, you could actually eat a very large amount of that type of carbohydrate, green leafy veg and salad, when you're aiming for, say, typically 40 or 50 grams of carbs, which most people suggest when you start the keto diet. So it's actually easy to get the roughage in, but most people opt for more dense carbs. And that soon brings the 40 or 50 grams up with food that doesn't have as much roughage. Now, the other issue with burning fat is that ketone, ketones are released in the breath. So depending on the speed at which you're burning fat, you can often get what's, what's basically a, a bad breath odor. And the more you burn fat, the lower your carb intake, the worse this can be, this offensive smell. So it's actually easier to start off in a slow way and keep yourself just borderline keto so that you are burning fat, but you're not getting this, this bad breath. And logically, bad breath can be dealt with in the normal way, but it's better to adjust via the diet. Now, the other problem that many people find when they're doing a keto diet is that they'll often get cramps. I, I had leg cramps, for example. And the main reason is that the ratio, ratio of sodium, salt, and potassium isn't correct if you haven't structured the diet correctly. The diet will typically lean towards a higher sodium ratio. And a very easy way of pulling that back is, as I've mentioned before, the aim of having a lot of leafy green vegetables which contain a lot of potassium. Now you can eat a very large amount of potassium. A typical RDA is 4,700 milligrams a day. That's huge when you express that in terms of say salad, that multiple bowls of salad a day. Or if you lean towards spinach then again it's a huge sitting of spinach. And Another shortcut is that you can juice very low sugar vegetables. I personally juice with um, celery, that's a good example, or cucumber and celery. And the mineral content of that is, is very, very beneficial, but it's a very quick way of getting a heavyweight shot of potassium to top up the, the minerals without overloading the blade. Now another symptom that you can run into is keto flu, as some people term it. And where the body's run on burning carbs for many, many years, it can take a week or so to upregulate the fat burning enzymes simply because the body hasn't been using them. They've been dormant for a while. And during that changeover period, you can sometimes get the reverse of what you're looking for. So you may feel your energy levels sort of hitting the wall as such and, and taking taking you down with something that feels a little bit like you've got flu, a little bit of sluggishness, a little bit of flu-like symptoms. And the easiest way of avoiding this is to transition slowly. Don't just jump in the deep end and go keto. Be aware of what you're trying to achieve and adjust the vegetables towards the leafy greens and increase that on a regular basis and slowly dial up the amount of fat in the diet and dial up the protein in the diet till you, you hit your desired numbers. 
Now, the other problem is that many people hear ketosis is a very dangerous state to put the body in. And that's because they're confusing it with a diabetic state. So when someone is diabetic and cannot produce insulin, they can enter a state called diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, that's very different from what we're doing, which is just encouraging the body to burn fat as its main fuel source. Now, I appreciate a lot of people watching this will be vegan or vegetarian. Whilst I'm personally not a vegetarian or vegan, I have a lot of respect for people who choose that dietary approach. We'll therefore look at the best ways for vegans and vegetarians to enter keto in another of these videos. So until then, thank you for visiting. Please press the update bell to ensure that you're notified as new videos come on stream. And if you've learned something, please give a thumbs up.